Hey guys, Javier Mercedes here for another Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to wipe things across your screen in order to get to your next scene as a transition. Here's some examples that I've used of it in the past. Alright, I think you get the point. I feel like I'm doing wax on, wax off, but let's take it to the computer. Here I have that first shot, and as you can see, I'm going from daytime to rainy. So, how am I doing this with those masks? How about we just start from the beginning, and then we'll just show you all of the things. So here is this shot right here during the day, looking out into those amazing clouds. Look at that. Oh, I'm just gonna make that full screen really quick. Oh my gosh, this is in Austria. In order to transition in my piece to go from, from day to nighttime, kind of nighttime-ish, I use the swipe transition. And all you gotta do is pick an object that is going across the screen, like I've been using my hand, and you use that as your wipe. And as it wipes, you'll take the you'll take the mask, and then you'll only uh, have the mask go and say, "Hey, don't I don't want anything on this side of the mask, but I do want this." So as I swipe across, it will reveal the other one beneath it. And I say, "Oh, look, this pole is right there, and I want to swipe across it." So I'm going to go to about 10% so I can get and get this smaller and manipulate the mask around all of this. Grab the pen tool and just say, this, this actually already goes into black right here. Like this is black, which is awesome. That way I can blend it with the rest of my material. So I'll go here, grab here, and just make this really big on this side so it doesn't really have anything to do. Oh, look at that. Now next, what I normally like to do is start from the back and go uh, forwards, like in reverse, because where the object ends up, it's a little bit simpler to go in reverse. Whereas if I were to start um, from the beginning, sometimes you have to start adding more nodes as you go along, which isn't too bad, but then as you get further into your cut, it doesn't help that you have all of these nodes around. I'm going to move this over, find where it kind of hits, and another reason why I want to go from the back forwards is I know that the ending angle is going to be kind of like this, tilted like that. Right now I'm going to take my feather and maybe I'll go 300 on the mask, that way it feathers into the black, and now I will make sure I start my keyframe. <laughs> I want to make sure I start my keyframe right there. Go to the mask, bring it up, and then I just start nudging my timeline. As you can see down here, I'm going back a couple frames and back a couple frames. And I always kind of want to stay in the center of that pole. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Now I can see that my angle is changing here, so I'm going to change the angle of this mask coming through just a little bit. Do, 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 do. So the less keyframes, the better, and I might go back and try and make this less keyframes. But let's see what we got here. Ah, see, I didn't, I didn't get the very, very end of the shot here. So in this mask, I want to make sure it goes through all the way. I'm sitting here, I'm walking around, and I think I thought to myself to get this same shot. So there we have the pull coming across right there. It takes up the whole frame, and all I gotta do is match those two together. So, boop, pop. What I might actually do at this point too is go to opacity and take my opacity down to maybe 50 so I can see the clip behind. And I can see here that, ah, 
see, here's my pole, here's this pole. So I'm going to move it just a smidge. See if I can catch up to uh, that pole. All right, let's step through. Looks about right. want to, oh, that's too much, that is too much sauce, and it's moving along, oh, look at how well that matches, and it looks like I speed up on the clip above here just a little bit, but I can, with it masked in that black, you have some leeway room right there, so what I will do now is take this to, uh, back up to 100, and let's just see what we get here. Swiper, no swipey. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Another way that you can do this real ragtag is go to your effects, go to crop, bring crop on, and then as the material wipes, you just do a crop as it goes. So. This really only works if you have straight up and down material or horizontal material. There and say maybe 100 and see what we get. Now I take my edge feather and feather that. Do, do. So let's see what we get. It's not bad. Uh, most of the time, if you can get away with using crop, it's less CPU intensive and it just helps uh, with just those renders and getting them out. Um, but most of the time, if you have a more like an object that is not just straight, you have to use a mask and you put it on the one at top and then you have it reveal the thing on the bottom. Now you can get really creative with how you do this kind of stuff. And I know I haven't actually experienced everything that I can do with it. Um, so I'm interested to see what you guys can do with it. If you guys use Premiere and a camera. <laughs> Hopefully this was useful for you, and if you like my material, if I helped you out, maybe you can help me out. Give me a like, give me a subscribe if you really like me, and come back for some more content. I like cooking, I like vlogging, as you can see here, um, and I like making these kind of videos for you guys. I'm coming out with content every day this November. If you could subscribe, that'd be awesome. I'm trying to get to those 200 subscriber mark by the end of November. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Bob the Builder. Swipe. <laughs>